In this tutorial we're going to add to the first one that we did by sketching on the top work plane we're going to create a few more shapes and use a few more different tools as well. So we've explored extruding so far, extruding to remove parts and to add them to create new parts. We've looked at using the, the fillet tool and the chamfer tool as well. So on this next one we're going to explore some of the features of that chamfer tool. So if we click on the top work plane, create a new sketch, always selecting the plane or the face where you want to put the drawing, create the sketch which in this case is just going to be a cylinder. We're not going to bother dimensioning this one, we're going to work a bit more freeform for now. Finish the sketch and extrude it to make a cylinder. Okay. So once we've clicked extrude you tell it what you want to extrude which is just this circle. I'm going to drag that up to make it a little bit larger and I'm happy with that so I can click the tick again. You can see it's a different colour and it's created a third part in our list. Good practice is to really encourage renaming these parts as you go along. So part three, if I right click on down here, I can rename and we can call it the cylinder or whatever it is that you want to rename that to. Okay, so let's do that for all three parts. So we've got the box, the cylinder, and then we can have the, the ring as well. So with the cylinder, we're now going to use the chamfer tool to create more of a cone shape. So using chamfer, we can just go on the edge and you can see it's done exactly what it did on the back of the ring the first time round. You've got some dif different options here though. You can either increase the size of this chamfer so it's staying even. So that angle is going to be 45 degrees. Or you can change it to two distances and then change distance one which is the amount it's going to go in which is 0.5, that should have been, not 5, sorry. And then the amount down here is on that one. And you can see then you can create all sorts of different shapes. So if we take that an inch in and 2.5 down, it should m look much more like a cone. And if you use your dimensions carefully, that's quite a nice one to create. Okay, we're now going to try again. So we'll actually do this on the side work plane, so the right side work plane. We're going to have a go with the revolve tool just next to extrude. So it's another way of creating your 3D shape. So on the right work plane, we're going to create a sketch and then we're going to look at it flat on from the right hand side. And on here, we're going to create half of what we want to revolve. So let's say we want to create a sphere. I'm going to draw a circle and then I'm going to cut the circle in half. And the reason for that is that that's going to create myself an axis that I can actually complete the revolve around and it makes it a little bit more straightforward. Okay, so I always create my revolves as half of the, the 2D shape of what I want to end up with. We can then finish that sketch, click the revolve tool, and again it goes through similar features as when you were creating an extrude. So it's asking you to select the faces, so click on the box and then click on your face if you like, and then it's asking you for the revolve axes, so that's the line that you want to revolve the shape around which is why we cut it in half and you can see that creates your sphere. If we want to take that one step further we could finish that and it would be our, our completed sphere and we rotate around it looks the same from all angles so it works quite well. We can go back into that so right click and edit on the extrude sorry or the revolve not the part <laughs> edit on there and then we've got options just around here full means it's going to do 360 degrees straight away you can do it so it's going one direction and then you can put the amount of degrees so if i put 280 we're just going to have three quarters of that sphere created and it creates these quite interesting shapes with relative ease what we'll do now is on the right side again looking at it flat i'm going to create a new sketch we're just going to create a, a glass design for say so i'm going to draw my rectangle in I'm then going to use some more of the features along here. So I might just use the spleen tool, which is kind of these wavy lines, and just create that shape in there. Okay. So I'm going to go now just to finish this to sketch by double clicking. You can see I've got this little bit of line, not finish the sketch, sorry, finish the spleen by double clicking. I'm going to use the scissors tool just to trim that bit that I don't want. So that scissors tool allows you to cut parts of the, the lines that you don't want away. I'm then going to use the line tool to draw a line straight down the middle here. And again, using the scissors now, I can cut away all of those parts that I no longer need. So I've designed my glass, or the half of the glass here, and I'm going to confirm that sketch. 
look at from a 3D angle, use middle click on your mouse to move that around, use the revolve tool again, select the face and the revolve axis which is that part there and you can see I've created my glass design. The only problem is it's solid, you wouldn't fit anything in it. So we're going to use the shell tool now which will do similar to what we did with the cube to start with, it's going to create a hollow. So if I click on shell up along there I'm then going to click on the surface of the part that I want it to break through. You can leave it hollow by clicking the option there but actually I want it to come through the top here so I'll just click on that top change the thickness to what you want and finish that and if you look through there now it's created our glass design. So hopefully that's introduced you to a few more features of Onshape that you can start to get to grips with. Good luck.